Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 168 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week I have five new Lit RPG reviews just for you folks at home. Before we begin, however, I want to give a quick shout out to a couple of great new supporters of the podcast, Nolan Ungoy and Jeff Hollingsworth, who are recently become supporters of the podcast they help keep uh, cover the cost of the podcast and keep the show ad free and free for all to enjoy so thanks you guys and of course if anybody else wants to help support the podcast um they can find out all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support um but this week we have again five new reviews and that includes class a threat discardium book number one um which is out now uh, we'll have a review for you for that also in search of the old ends Galactagon book number two and slimy and misty wieners carried in the creature short story written by Robert Bevan. Then it'll be the fallen bard world of chains book number one written by Lars M, which is the sequel to the wayward bard highly successful. Uh, and last but not least, it'll be into the dragon's den action druid book number two. So five new reviews for you. Before we get into that, we're going to go with the lit RPG news. And in Little RPG News, we're going to begin with a quick reminder that uh, M.A. Carlson's book, World Tree Online, is now up for pre-order. It'll be out on May the 1st. Um, But until then, he's offered to help promote it by uh, reducing the price on the first two books in that series. Uh, Book one will be on sale uh, starting on April 24th to May the 1st, when book three comes out. It'll be reduced uh, to $2.99. Book two will be on sale at, for the same time period, but it'll be reduced to $1.99. So, uh, interesting pricing model. Uh, we'll see how that goes for him. But, you know, books that cost you less is always nice. And, of course, these books are all, uh, usually on the Kindle Unlimited anyway. So, uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, in other Little Bitty news, we have some folks in the audiobook Little Bitty and Game Lit genres that are up for some awards uh, from the Independent Audiobook Awards. Congrats to everyone nominated. Um, I'm super interested, that curious that we got our own category, Gamelet. Um, the nominees for this particular category are The Accidental Thief, written by James a James Davis and C.J. Davis, performed by a Roberto Scalarto. Achilles Reign, Praetoria Online, book number four, written by Don Chapman, performed by Annalise Rennie. Hobgoblin Riot, Dominion of Blades, book number two, written by Matt Deneman, performed by Andrea Parsnow. Uh, the Land of the Undying Dark Elf Chronicles, book number one, written by Dave Wilmarth, performed by Justin Thomas James, Lori Catherine Winkle, Jeff Hayes, the folks who read uh, Sampa Theater. Uh, also nominated is Initializing, Somnia Online, book number one, written by Katie Hanna, performed by Andrea Parsnow. So all kinds of great uh, books, great authors, great narrators. Congratulations, folks. Actually be at this particular con Um to help support those folks and do some other fun stuff with a little bit of genre. Uh, so congrats. Hopefully we'll see you there and get to shake the hands of the folks you won. Uh, and other little bit of news. Just want to thank you guys for seriously kicking them out last week. I uh, had a great contest of uh, supporting a, a, a fun, uh, little RPG group called spoil rotten readers. Um, and you guys, you guys came through. You really did. Not only did the Spoiled Rotten Readers reach their 300 and, uh, sorry, their 300 person goal, um, they hit 332. Uh, and w- in line with that, the group had a live stream celebration last weekend. Um, they gave it a bunch of prizes. We actually have a, a link in the channel to the YouTube live stream that Jeff Hayes was nice enough to host. Um, stuff donated from us, from Liberty Podcast, Dave Volmarth, Apollo Thorne, and even Jeff Hayes all went out to people. And there was also a, less a lively conversation um, among friends about the genre and just some fun stuff for a couple hours, including some um, very interesting reads of people's stories uh so definitely go check that out uh but but the prize winners uh for the audiobooks that i was giving away are david nix bobby burstum carl ben cesar rick holmes and george fisher uh, so guys make sure you check your facebook messengers i've already sent messages out to all the guys uh and ladies uh <laughs> who won uh with their audiobook codes uh dave Wilmarth also gave away some stuff free signed copies of his amazing books and his winners are grant a hurl and m damien baker apollo's thorns uh gave out uh books to justin roy and zachary norman uh so for code name freedom books um and also jeff gave away an audible code to uh, peter vant so again check your face messenger um notices in case they went to some other place um but you might have already won so there we go 
Um, on to stuff that is out now. I haven't had a chance to review it, but it is out now, including War God's Mantle, book three called Underworld, written by Jay Hunter and Aaron Crash. Uh, also, what is The Last Player Standing, written by Alexei Vlokov, which is a pen name for another author who writes Letter BG, just decided to use a pen name this time. Uh, and Pantheon VR number one Olympus. So uh, those three new little Vijayadi books came out just this week. Um, and new audiobooks, not a huge selection this week, but um, it's actually a book that's come out as ebook and audiobook at the same time, which is really challenging to do. Uh, Class A Threat Discardian, book number one, written by Dan Sergonoff, has both out at the same time. So congratulations, folks. If you want to listen as an audiobook, you can. In upcoming Little BG, this is just where I read off the stuff that's coming out in the near future. Feel free to skip ahead. Uh, but there are some new additions. Uh, the Limitless Lands book number three, Retribution, will be out on April the 30th. On May the 1st, it'll be the Mountain Valley War. Second Dive Concludes, World Tree Online. This is, again, technically the third book in that series. That's why it's Second Dive Concludes. For The, the actual second book was called um, Second Dive, I think, Commences or Starts or something. Um... Also out on May the 2nd will be Starbreak, Rise to Omniscience, book number two. On May the 7th, it'll be the Azure Dragon, a heroic fantasy saga, which is the third book in that series. May the 14th, it'll be Monster, a little bitty series, The Beetle. Looks like a monster, a little bitty story. Um, May the 18th, the fifth book in the Guardians of the Roundtable series will be out. May the 20th, it'll be the fourth book in the Reality Bender series called Web of Worlds. May the 21st, the second book in the Alform series called Scruffier. That these are some of them the most interesting titles. Uh it's a translation, I think. Um also on June the first it'll be the second realm uh, second book in the Realm of Nora series uh called The Life. On June the first it'll be the third book in the uh, Akemi Online series uh called Kingdom Come. Uh, the second book in the Discardium series will be out on June the 10th, Apostles of the Sleeping Gods. Again, we're reviewing book number one on the podcast today. Book two will be out on June the 10th. On June the 13th, it'll be the sixth book in the Good Guy series called Home Siege Home. Always a funny, entertaining series there. On June the 15th, it'll be Code Hero. Champions is playing book number two with the very familiar and beloved Little Piggy there. On June the 20th, it'll be the second book in Adam Online, City of Freedom, and Max Largo. June the 20th, the third book in the Jin Tamer series called Evolution. On June 25th, it'll be the second book in the Shift series called Stealthcaster. On July the 18th, Time Master, Interworld Network book number one, an entirely new series will be out. And that'll be it. Uh, so there we go. On to new releases and reviews. And first out of the gate, we have Class A Threat Discardian book number one, a little bit of series written by Dan Sugarloff. Uh, and uh, this is actually an interesting story. Um, I actually was able to talk to the author about this particular story. I did an author interview with him on our, on our website, alitabitabonkast.com. You can check that out there if you want the fuller story. Um, but I guess the, there were some issues with like the cover art potentially not uh, describing the story particularly well. But here is... Uh, it is 517 pages, $3.99, not available on Kindle Limited. And here's the novel description from the publisher. Um, Our future, non-citizens and individuals of low social standing can only find work in one place, the virtual world of Discardium. And that might mean mining ore. It could just as well mean cleaning pigsties or washing dishes in a tavern, but that's about as glamorous as it gets. 15-year-old schoolboy Alex has dreams of working as a space guide. All they can think of is the stars, but life gets in the way, and now his only path to achieving that goal is through the game. And that is the novel description, and I'll be honest, uh, I absolutely agree that uh, neither the cover art nor the novel description really do an amazing job of telling you what the story is about or giving you hints or, like, hooking you in a lot of ways. Like, the bland, uh, the cover is a little bland, not just because it's black and white, actually. I like black and white. Um, but they're just pe- people sitting there. Um, and if you've read the story, that totally absolutely makes sense that's a good portion of like the beginning um like 15 20 percent of the story describing like this you know this attitude the main character just like wanting to sit around um instead of playing the game because he kind of messed up his character um but again it doesn't really i think justify um that this isn't actually a good story and that it's actually set in a fantasy 
MMO VR world. Again, that's definitely not conveyed with the like modern dress uh, clothing of, on the cover art. Um, so I just full disclosure, I received a on copy for you. I purchased a copy when it became available. I am. There are some minor translation issues and a few phrases that don't get quite translated around the story. Um, it's nothing that breaks the story for me, at least, but you're going to probably notice them. Um, this is a Russian translated novel from the author of the Level Up series. It has a few things in common with that series, I think, and I think there's just themes to the author's writing. Um, it, this is a slice loving story, um, and it has themes related to hard work causing self-improvement and, and power games, not just luck. And I think that's something worth mentioning just because a lot of... Um, stories that come from Russia that are translated, they, they kind of, um, this is just my opinion and experience based upon reading them, they seem to sometimes focus on just like luck giving the main character like this big boost. Um, and that kind of being the thing that their special ability, their special power that they just happen to get lucky and they fall into like greater power structures. Um, in the author's novels where there's the level up series of this one here, there's always like this this shift in that kind of struggling. Yes, there's sometimes some luck and that the main character will get some particular skill or ability or technology. But there's also a subset of like, that I think really resonates at least with me as an American or American audience is that hard work is really the key to progress and to power gain and to to that to that power curve structure that that, that are in RPG little RPG stories, um, and that definitely comes across here. Even though the main character does kind of hack eventually get this OP skill uh, and these overpowered abilities, it, it's not without cost. It, it it's very hard to make character to use. Um, there there's definitely a pain cost associated with it, and and to progress, he has to work super hard. And I think that's one of the things that for me in particular, um, I've always really enjoyed about these series, like. A lot of the author's writing has has really just been slice life stuff. Where in the level up series, it's you're following the main character as he's going through the modern world with this RPG system, but he still has to work hard, and it's still very engaging. In this one here, um, it's a little more traditionalish MMO fantasy stuff. From that, the main character is he's 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 leveling up, he's going on quests, he's doing these fights, dungeon knives kind of stuff eventually. Um, but there's still that same kind of core aspect of he has to work hard to fulfill his goals, otherwise things are not gonna go well. And I think that's something that I, I've always appreciated in that the main character isn't just given power, he has to work really hard for it. Um, and for me, that's always one of those interesting things. Um, in the story, like I said, the, the hardest part of probably getting to the story is gonna be getting past the first 15% or so of it. A lot of that first 15% is is set up. Um, it's a little, um, I want to say vague and ambiguous about like, oh, where the story is going to be kind of going because it starts off with the main character being really excited about, oh, this great new virtual reality system that he's getting for his birthday. Um, and he makes his character and this is minorly spoiler, but he messes up making it. And so it, then after that, he kind of just jumps like a year ahead where he's no longer really interested. And he looks like that guy in the cover because he messed up his character. So it's really almost impossible for him to like level up his character because he just messed up so badly. Um, then something in life hits. And this is definitely hinted at in the, in the novel description that something changes in his life. And so now if he if he's ever gonna accomplish his, his real life goal of like going into space and being one of those one of those people in the far future that's that's traveling through space, he's going to have to like come up with the money to pay for his education. And his parents can't do it anymore for whatever circumstances, which I won't spoil. Um and so once he actually has a, a motivation to to improve his life, that's when the story gets interesting. And again, that doesn't really happen until like the 15% mark or so. A lot of that earlier 50% is um, explaining what the world is, um, how it in, how it how it's different for adolescents than it is for adults, how the the strata area is they call it um something else. I, I think they mean like a walled garden garden, but they call it like a, a sandbox. Um so I'm like, okay, that's I get one of those little translation issues. Um, but from that 50% on, it, it it's definitely more interesting in that the main character is finally motivated to take his broken character and to work really hard and improve it. And he gets lucky. And that 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 luckiness turns into OP ability. Um, but there are definitely consequences for that. And it's not just... It, this is definitely isn't just like an overpowered main character where everything comes to him easily. It's, there are definitely consequences. And I think that's part of the fun of this particular story. Uh, using figuring out a way for the main character to take his working character and improve it and, and, and level when it's super challenging um, so that he can make money in game to pay for college. And so it, it's a really interesting um, kind of system there. And I'm going to a little bit about some of the game mechanics in this story that make it um, a little bit different um, from other stories, but overall the, 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 
this is this is kind of a fun slice of life fantasy adventure story. So it's it's entertaining for me. Um, additional things in the story that I think are interesting: there are guild politics, player versus player stuff, a little high school social stuff. But again, it's mostly just the main character figuring out how to use his unique circumstances to work towards his goals. Um, I think the ending is a little bit rushed for me, but you know, overall the story is very fun. Um, Game mechanic wise, it's going to be a lot of familiar MMO stuff because that's where it's that instant in VR MMO. Uh, so you're going to things like level, stats, ability, skills, a little bit of crafting. Um, there's a slightly higher emphasis on like gear improving stats um, and giving stat and skill bonuses. Um, I think the most unique game mechanic in the story is one where the game or the game developers assign players as threats and encourage them to become more powerful or evil characters um, and for other players to kill them for special rewards. It's kind of a neat PvP concept that I think I, I wouldn't mind actually playing around with. It kind of reminds me of some video games where like one player becomes the villain and then the ones are, are supposed to be like the guys who stop him. Um, and to a degree that's here, there's a little more subtlety to it here and that the main character has to kind of hide that aspect of it. And if you sign up, then it becomes more of a cat straightforward cat and mouse game. Um, but it's like I said, it's a unique little twist on that kind of general MMO stuff. Um, overall, I had a good time with this story. I did. Uh, it was a little challenging and to get past that first 15% and stay super engaged. But again, once I, the main character started to do the dungeon knives, it was really easy to just like sit back and enjoy the story. Um, but again, it took a little effort. So if you find yourself struggling with that first bit, just try to push past it. I think you'll enjoy it. If you like, again, slice of life stories, if you like good action adventure, good RPG adventuring, if you're okay with like some abilities that are a little overpowered, um, all that is here. And I, I enjoy the story. And if book two was available now, it is for free order. Um, I would totally read it and buy it today. So I had a good time with it. Get the score of 7.6 out of 10 for me. That's class A threat discarding book number one, uh, a little bit of series with a score of 7.6 out of 10. Okay, up next is... In Search of the Old Ends, Galacticon, book number two, written by Vasily Mahenko. Uh, he's the author of the We the Shaman series. Uh, it is 387 pages, $6.99 that is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. What could be better than space adventures? Captain Surgeon knows the answer to this question. Space piracy, loot, pillage, plunder, and sell all that lucre. That's the motto of the Galacticon pirates, and Surgeon is doing his best to join their number. But what is to be done when the enigmatic Oldens do not want to leave our swashbuckler in peace and keep laying new mysteries in his path, distracting him from his main goal? How does one become a formidable buccaneer, the scourge of Galacticon's countless star systems, when an indomitable alien invasion is raising empires all across the galaxy? Time and again, the game hands Captain Surgeon the black spot, and time and again, he refuses to take it. It looks like he will have to work extra hard to realize his dream of piracy and find all the answers to these mysteries. Okay, um, I'm not sure what the black spot is. Um, so, uh, I think we translation thing. Um, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, wow, it's been like three and a half years uh, since book one came out. And uh, you can kind of tell a little bit that there's been some time difference for the author and for the reader for the translation team um and and it's not necessarily a bad thing it is just a thing you have to accept um because this second book in the story takes a real hard left turn from kind of the contest um plot storyline in book one so that there's definitely a big shift there the main character goes on this sci-fi space opera adventure with the goal of being a free space pirate making as much money as possible for his uh real, real life issues there are some really good space battles, uh, lots of new characters, new quests, exciting adventures. But the story, for me at least, was a little bit less focused than it was in book one. Like in book one, you definitely knew that there was a goal, find the thing, win the contest, win the money, right? That's it's simple. Um, and, and in line with that, the main character explains to us how the game works. And there's, there's a whole opening sequence of like this, you know, beginner noob experience of like, Making your character, figuring out the game mechanics work, and all that's explained. And you see more like damage notification. Um, in book two, there's sort of, there's definitely an assumption that you've read book one and that you understand the game mechanics. So there there's less of an explanation, um, and it kind of just again shifts more towards the space side of things. Like the main has he has a spaceship, he's going on these space adventures, he's trying to be a space pirate. 
Um, and so it's it definitely focused on space combat. There's definitely some really great space battles, multiples of them. Um, but it, it's it's more slice of life because then the story has left that uh, contest plot line series that for now, um, it, it really just him going on these adventures. And so it's a little more slice of life. And so you have to be okay with that if you're going to really enjoy this. Um, the game mechanics, again, are very consistent with book one. Again, there is less of an explanation or recap of them because, again, the author does assume you've read uh, about the explanation of it in book one a little bit. Um, so in this particular story, there are fewer game notifications. Um, there are still game mechanics there. They're just, again, different than traditional RPG stuff. So if you if it's been a while for you, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of what those game mechanics are so you don't think that this isn't little bit G. Um, there are no character classes or levels in this, in this game world. Instead, power is increased by improving the class of your equipment and ships, making them more powerful, thus making you more powerful. Upon player death, um, those that equipment and those ships they lose class effectiveness. So again, they your it's almost like your equipment and your ship is losing levels instead of you. And so it's kind of the same concept. The the the, the RPG progress part is just shifted towards your equipment instead of you yourself. Um, there are occupations instead of class like character classes. Um, they kind of fill the same role again. There just aren't levels. You just get to increase your ability to specialize through chain quest as as a player. So um, again, similar concepts, just slightly different to make a little more variation um there's also lots of stuff in the game in the game novel about uh reputation which affects requests are available and potentially if like a player becomes hunted if his reputation falls low enough uh the most common form of like game stuff you're going to see here is going to be quest notifications quest rewards and general like player talk about like what being an mmo is and like some some player terms um and so you'll see a lot of that stuff Overall, though, this is an entertaining story. Um, it just kind of took me a little while to recall whoever it was and what the plot line is for book one. But the author does a really good job of, in the beginning portion, just kind of reminding you, oh, this is what the plot was in book one. We're, we're, we're not doing that anymore, but hey, that's what it was. Um, and so again, just be aware that this novel is very entertaining. It is, it's good, it's, it's good. Um, but again, it's more slice of life space opera a little bit. And, and, and it just, that's what it is. It's slice of life, he's on space battles, he's going on space adventures doing space piratey things, um, those good action adventure. But again, it leads a little more casual, a little less focused of like, oh, where is this kind of going? Like there, there's some goals of the main character, like just kind of wanting to make as much money as possible to to deal with issues IRL. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a kind of just slice of life, space battles, space fire stuff. Um, I had a with it, not quite as much as book one. This one gives a score of 7.2 out of 10. Still good. Still a good story, just not quite as good as I think book one was. Um, so that's a score of 7.2 out of 10 for In Search of the Aldens, Galacticon book number two, a little bitty series. So there we go. Had a good time with it. And next up, we have uh, Slimes and Misty Wieners, written by Robert Bevan. This is a Creatures in Cavern short story. Uh, it is 38 pages. Uh, it is two ninety nine, which is a little expensive for the page count, but it is available on Kindle Unlimited, so feel free to go grab it on there. Um, it's here's the author's description. It's it's not a short, it's not a long story, it's not a long review. Um, a simple hunting expedition leads to a discussion of the nature of good and evil, and the good and evil of nature. When Julian and the C and C gang find themselves in prison in the home of a druid and a wizard, horses die, pants are soiled, for science. Uh, and honestly, that that's definitely that's all that's true. That's a that's an amazingly good succinct summary of the plot lines of the story. Uh, and as usually the case, the cavern the creature short story. It's funny uh, in a very specific way. There's a lot of cursing. There's a lot of potty humor. Um, and I always really enjoy these little um, short side stories with these characters that I've really come to like love and enjoy. Um, in between like the main series releases um i i in this particular one again i can't really say anything about it without spoiling it so short um but i loved i think one thing that i really loved personally is like the use of natural selection as a village device it's kind of hinted at in that part but for science i'm like yep that's me i'm i'm a nerdy math science guy and this definitely mushed that with <laughs> with the caverns and creatures sense of humor um and like fun banter and just like fun stuff I remember that the cavern creatures uh, series um is uh your it, 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 the main title series is critical failures it's the cavern creature series um and it's it's the main characters are trapped in a tabletop game um and but they recognize that they're they're players and but they still have that same goofy world like our life sense of like 
potty humor, um, you know, banter, you know, messing with your friends kind of stuff. And I think that's kind of a really big draw for with the characters. But enjoyable, super funny. Just be aware, lots of cursing, uh, lots of potty humor stuff. But for me, it gets, of course, 7.5 out of 10. Had a good time with it. Uh, that's Slimes and Misty Wieners, Caverns and Creatures, uh, with the score of 7.5 out of 10. And next we have The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two, written by Lars M. This is the sequel to the Wayward Bard series from the same author. Here is the author's, uh, actually, it's so sorry, 412 pages, $4.99, available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Daniel's Updated Guide to Early Retirement, version 2.0. One, intercept illegal money transfer from mafia bosses. Complete success, except for the part where I was discovered and almost caught. Two, hide out in super exclusive full immersion virtual reality game until the heat is off. Doing fine so far, may have figured out that I'm in game. Still, it's a huge game, so no problem, right? Three, roll a bard. Max out charisma, live it up. Uh, two out of three ain't bad. We're just postponing the live it up part of it. Four, profit. Still almost two years to go for that. Um... Think happy thoughts. There you go. And uh, he could have been way worse off. Sure, Daniel was stuck in a game as a local bard for the quaint village, but people were nice. The quest juicy and the lore intriguing. Even so, with the mob on the lookout, Daniel will soon find himself sorely tested to avoid detection. Disclaimer, still no harems in the series, even with the bard MC. Go figure. We're doing light on the cursing and less light on the puns. You were warned. So there you go. That's the author's description. Uh, full disclosure, I received a man's copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, really short, easy review on this one. Um, this is the sequel to the popular Wave of the Bard series uh, novel. Um, and it does not disappoint. The lovable, snarky Bard is back for more adventures, more fun uh, one front stories, and this was generally hard to put down. Um, there is good world building here, good character building, and I think one of the things I really appreciate about the story is that um, the author definitely leans hard into what his idea of of a bard should be. In this case, it's more of a historical um, collection bard um, with like some, definitely some good buffs and some good magical abilities and some combat as as a almost secondary role. Um, but I really appreciated the way the author did role building, did character building for the characters by collecting their particular stories. So it was a really nice way of just like learning small little snippets of the world um, on a very natural way. Cause that, that definitely feels like something that a good bard would do in collecting stories and then making songs out of them and using that information to, you know, um, explore the, the quests and explore the world and, you know, um, and advance things like that. Uh, but it all starts off with just being a good conversationalist. And that was definitely a big part of what the story is, is appeal is like, there's some really good rubbling from just talking to NPC characters. Uh, and it was really enjoyable. Um, New to the story is, again, uh, some new aspects of it. Pet raising, class training. There's a bit of tournament fighting here. Um, the things that I've really enjoyed about, this, about the first story are still here. Smart playing, stats that matter. That's really one of the big things that I think is a draw for me, at least, in that the main character has deficits in stats, and it actually is reflective in the story. He's not, he doesn't have great strength there, like dexterity stats, um, which means he's not great in straightforward combat. And that's something he has to overcome and train about. And even with training, he's never going to be a good fighter. Um, but he has, he maximizes the good stats and his good abilities, which is like a maxed out charisma stat. And uh, which, which leads into like a small casting. And so the fact that the stats actually have an impact, like a visible written consistent impact is, is really, um, you know, nice for me at least. Cause I'm one of those people like, oh, if the stats don't really like reflect, um, in the story, it lessens my enjoyment because that means those numbers don't really matter. Uh, there's also lots of training in the story, um, songs galore, which is fun for a lot of people, um, and really just interesting quests. Uh, again, the novel is a little slice of life, and the main character just kind of does some stuff, has some goals, but it's really good stuff. I think the action is turned up a little bit in this one compared to book one a little bit. Um, but again, it's, I think the, the big draw is the main character. He's, he's really likable. He's really snarky. It's fun, bantery, um, good puns. Um, and he gets to explore some other areas besides the starter quest, the starter village. Um, and so you get some, get to expand your, your world a little bit and that's enjoyable. And I think I, I enjoyed Every moment of it, had a good time with it, gets a score of 7.6 out of 10 for me. That's The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two. And again, when I think of like a really good, like a Liberty Bard story, 
this is always the series that I recommend and the series that comes to mind. So enjoyable, again, with a score of 7.6 out of 10 for The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two. And next is Into the Dragon's Den, Axe Jurid, book number two, written by Christopher Johns. Uh, this is 458 pages, $5.90, that it's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Zeke and his comrades have only been in their new world, Brindola, for a short time, but every minute has been amazing. Kicking butt and not bothering to take names, the group has been moving forward in their quest to push back the galactic tyrant, War. Then the unthinkable happens. Their friend is banished to the darkest hells. Poof. Gone. Just like that. Now, not only are they on a quest to stop the, the vanguard of war, but they're going to need to get stronger faster and better than ever if they want to have any hope of busting into hells and getting their friend back. The Brindling gods plan to help as much as they can, but will it be enough to allow them to complete a task that even uh, Orpheus couldn't in Earth's mythology? Will the odds of looking back, of looking bleak rather, and the world they're trying to defend turning on them, they're going to need to seek help from unlikely spaces, travel to new places, and break some faces. So there we go. Um, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Uh, this is definitely the week of uh, <laughs> got advanced copies. Okay, um, here's the review. Um, the story continues on with most of the things I liked about book one while having few of the issues that stopped it from being a good story for me. Book one, for me, um, even though like a lot of people really enjoyed the story, for me, it just kind of missed a little bit. I get ended up giving six out of ten just because... Um, the storyline felt forced all the places. Um, and that just kind of stopped it from getting good for me. Like it was really close. So it was, a, I'd say like 6.8, 6.9. Um, and that shifts this time. Like there are essentially just fewer forced moments in the story. There's some in the beginning still. Um, and there's like less unrealistic advancement. Um, and in the story, there's, there's just fewer of those things. Like the, the power still earned the short, like the little stories, um, in, in here, all, they feel well connected. They feel very reasonably connected. Um, and so it's just easier to just kind of sit back and enjoy things in this novel. Um, the story has, again, all the elements that fans really enjoy from book one, I think. And if you like book one, you're going to like book two. It's, there's no there's no question about it. Good group banter, good action adventure, good fighting scenes, crafting, um, a slice of life adventuring with a group going on a power leveling trip. All that is there in this particular novel. There are additionally some things about um, class questing. You get some new team members to replace a certain missing one, which is talked about in the novel description. Uh, however, just don't expect a lot of forward progress on that, um, on the ending of book one. Like if, if you've read book one, you know the end I'm talking about. Don't expect a lot of progress in that particular point. Like a lot of book two is essentially gaining the power that the group is going to need to address that particular issue. Um, so just an FYI. Overall, um, the story again, it, it, it felt a, a lot like the kind that a, a DM would give to you, which is a comment I made about book one, that it felt like, oh, this is this feels more like, even though it's supposed to be sent like this, you know, um, transported to a game world situation, it felt a lot like um, the kind of story that a dungeon master would tell a tailor group. Like, oh, you guys are in this field and this is happening. And there's really not sometimes not a lot of explanation about, oh, why those things are happening. Uh, because in a tabletop game, when you're playing with your players, it's like, oh, the, everybody wants to move and advance the story. So they're very willing to accept like the strangest like setup situation. And there's there's no need to make those reasonable or to, or to give additional information. The characters just accept it and they move on because you're trying to make the game progress faster. Um, but when that happened in book one, um, it felt awkward for me because again, this this is a novel and it's and there's plenty of room to make those those situations um more natural feeling, I guess. Um, and in book two, that happens a little bit more. Like the, the, there's more of a natural feeling of why these situations exist, why the main character is doing them. And for me, even though there's still some four situations, um, that was really the difference between enjoying it and not. Uh, and for me, so I had a good time with it. Um, it, it can, again, just there are still some four situations which annoy me a little bit. Um, but overall, um, 
because I noticed it happening less, I just was just able to enjoy things a little more. And so the good outweighed the annoying this time. And so I just had a better time with it. And that, that's what it came down to. So for me, I enjoyed it. I had a good time with the story. It gets a score of 7.1 out of 10. Um, and Into the Dragon's Den, Axe Druid, book number two, uh, with a score of 7.1 out of 10. I had, it, I had a good time this time. So there we go. And that's it, everybody. Um, thank you very much for listening to me talk about the show. If you want to help us, uh, follow us, you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Patreon, uh, and our website at litrpgpodcast.com, where we give like all the recommendations we've ever had, all the huge database of litrpg stories we've read. We're coming up on uh, almost 800 um, litrpg novels that I've read and reviewed. They're all there for you to like peruse and and to see the things that you like we try to organize them by by story tags um by genre by subgenres um so you can get all your denny crawl all your denny core novels and all your you know slice slice stories and all your female protagonist stories you can find them all there to search through um so but thanks for hanging out though um Remember, if you want to enjoy the podcast and you help want to support us in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the ways you do so at litrpdpodcast.com slash support. Um, but until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day uh, to spend a little bit with me. I really appreciate it. I know I, I go off on tangents about some liberty stories, but I love the genre. I love these stories. They, they're they always so entertaining for me, and I'm glad that you share that with me. Um, so, so thank you very much. And until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, remember to go read some Little RPG. Goodbye, everybody.